Hey guys, today we're going to review probability. We're going to start with sample spaces. So a sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes and of an event. It can also be displayed with a tree diagram. So let's look at this first question. It says, Brittany will roll a six sided die and flip a coin for a probability experiment. The coin can land on heads or tails. If Brittany rolls the die once and flips the coin once, create a tree diagram and list all the possible outcomes in which the die lands on a three or less. So let's start with that since she's gonna do that first and I'm going to start with the tree diagram and then we'll use the tree diagram to list all the possible outcomes. So she's going to roll the dice and it's she wants to know probability of it landing on a three or less. So three or less, when she rolls, it means it could land on a one, two, or a three. Then after that, she's going to flip the coin once and it can land on heads or tails. So it could land on one and then land on heads or tails, two and then land on heads or tails, three and then land on heads or tails. So there's the tree diagram. Now I'm going to list all the possible outcomes. So the first outcome would be a one and it lands on heads. Second outcome would be one it lands on tails. Third outcome would be two it lands on heads. Fourth outcome would be two it lands on tails. Third outcome would be, or the fifth outcome would be three and then it lands on heads and then the last outcome would be a three and it lands on tails. So there are all the possible outcomes and I showed it with a tree diagram. Okay, then we can make predictions by setting up a proportion. We have experimental probability and theoretical probability. So experimental probability is when they actually did an event and it's the number of times the event occurred out of the total trials in the experiment. And then theoretical probability would be the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total possible outcomes. So let's look at number two. It says a survey showed that six out of 30 homeowners in a neighborhood had fiber internet. If there were 510 homeowners in the neighborhood, how many could be expected to have fiber internet? So let's use the information that they gave us, which is six out of 30 have internet. And we want to know out of the 510 homeowners in the neighborhood, how many we would expect them to have fiber internet after that. So I just need to solve this proportion. First thing I notice is that six and 30 are both divisible by six. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify that ratio. So my new proportion is six divided by six is one, 30 divided by six is five. So one over five equals X over 510. And now I'm gonna cross and multiply to solve this proportion. One times 510 is 510. And then it equals five times X, which is five X. And now I'm going to divide by five and 510 divided by five is 102. So we would expect based on that survey for 102 out of the 510 homeowners to have fiber internet. Okay, let's look at three. It says a bag contains three blue tiles, seven red tiles, four orange tiles, and six yellow tiles. A tile will be drawn from the bag and replaced 120 times. What is a reasonable prediction for the number of times a blue or yellow tile will be drawn? So let's start with what we know. There are three blue tiles and six yellow tiles, which makes nine blue or red tiles in total. And let's figure out how many tiles are in the bag. Three plus seven is 10, 10 plus four is 14, four plus six is 20. So there's 20 tiles total. So there are nine out of 20 tiles that are blue or yellow. And now we want to know if they're gonna draw 120 times how many we would expect to be blue or yellow. We're gonna use that theoretical probability in our proportion here. So now I'm going to cross, actually I can use the relationship here. 
20 times 6 would get me to 120. So that means 9 times 6 would get me to the missing value there. And 9 times 6 is 54. So we would expect 54 of the tiles that were drawn to be yellow or blue. Okay, let's talk about simple probability and complements. So simple probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total outcomes. And then the complement is the not possible outcomes out of the total outcomes. So let's look at number four. I have a spinner right here that's divided into congruent sections that are labeled from one through eight. If the spinner is spun one time, what is the probability of the arrow landing on a section that is a multiple of four? So multiple of four on the spinner, that would be a four and an eight. So that is two out of the eight sections that are a multiple of four. Those are both divisible by two, so I can simplify this probability by dividing by two, and I get one out of four. And then the next one says, if the spinner is spun one time, what is the probability of the arrow landing on a section that is not one, two, or three? So if it is not one, two, or three, that means that it could be four, five, six, seven, or eight, which is five out of the eight numbers. Okay, then independent events are when the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of the other event, um, and you would just multiply their probabilities together to find the total probability. The dependent events is when the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of the other event, and you'll still multiply them together. You'll just have to make sure that when you're finding the probability of the second event, you're finding it after that first event happened. So let's look at this first one. It says, Katie has three bags with four cards in each bag. The four cards in each bag are numbered one to four. Katie will randomly select a card from each bag one time. What is the probability that all three cards that Katie selects will be a two? So each of the three bags is going to have one, two, and there's four cards in total in each bag. So we would do one out of four for the first bag times the second bag would also have a probability of one out of four times the third bag would also have a probability of one out of four. So one times one times one is one. Four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. So that probability would be one out of 64. Okay, let's look at number six. It says Kendra has one bag with six cards in it. The, num the cards are numbered from one to six. What is the probability that Kendra will draw a one, not put it back, then draw a five? So we have two things happening here. Let's look at her first draw. There are six cards when she first draws, and we want to know what the probability of her drawing a one is. Well, that would be one out of six because one out of the six cards is going to be a one. Then she's going to not put it back. So that means there's only five cards now, and out of the five cards, one of them would be a five. One times one is one, and six times five is 30, so that probability would be one out of 30. Okay, last thing we're gonna look at is qualitative and quantitative predictions and comparisons. You really just wanna think through and calculate all the possibilities on these types of questions. So let's do that with number seven. It says the table shows the numbers of different flavors of cookies at Tasty Sweets. A customer will randomly select one cookie to order. Based on the information in the table, which statement is true? So here, are the number of cookies that were ordered for each flavor. A says the cookie is four times as likely to be sugar as it is to be chocolate chip. Well, 12 times four is 48. So it is not four times as likely. It is more likely to be sugar, but not four times as likely. So it's not A. 
Let's look at B. B says the cookie is more likely to be sugar than all the other flavors combined. So sugar is 32 people ordered and the other flavors would be 12 plus 24, which is 36, which is not more than the 30 or which is more than the 32 sugar. And they said that the sugar would be more likely. So that doesn't work either. Okay, let's look at C. C says the cookie is twice as likely to be oatmeal as it is to be chocolate chip. Well, 12 times two is 24, so that works. The cookie is twice as likely to be oatmeal as it is to be chocolate chip. 